Welcome to Chart Center. I'm Tetris Kelly here with Christina Garibaldi. And normally here on the show, we talk about music and charts, and we will get into all that stuff. But before that, we do have to take a moment to acknowledge a tragedy that has hit the music community very hard. In Orlando, Florida, a Pulse nightclub, a LGBT club there, 49 lives were stolen from us. Yes, and just one night before, Christina Grimmie, a rising musician, was gunned down during a meet and greet at her concert. And there was so much love and outpouring and support from her fellow artists over the weekend. Selena Gomez and Charlie Puth both dedicated songs to her at their concerts. And her voice coach, Adam Levine, actually offered to pay for her funeral services. I actually spoke to Christina Grimmie back in 2011 before she was on The Voice. She was a rising YouTube star. She was opening up for Selena Gomez. She was so excited. She was just a bright, creative, talented girl who literally lit up the room when she walked in. It is such a tragedy. There's been an outpouring of love for the Orlando victims on social media. Adele dedicated her concert, very, very tearful performance. And of course, at the end of this weekend, we needed something like the Tonys, and the Tonys did the right thing. They dedicated the show to the Orlando victims. Lin-Manuel Miranda kind of encompassed what every single artist was thinking when he read his sonnet at the Tony Awards. And love is 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 love cannot be killed or swept aside. I firmly believe that art fights chaos and art fights violence and senselessness. And I wear this flag for our LGBTQ community, who is the cornerstone of our industry. And so uh, I think it's important to be loud and proud and support more now than ever. Now, Hamilton is a production that represents a lot of love. It received a lot of love at the Tonys and could do well on our charts. So let's look at Next Week Now, presented by StubHub. Yes, but before we talk about the charts, we do have to talk about the Tonys. We do. It cleaned up, winning 11 awards, including Best Musical and Best Original Score. And our guest from last week, who is kind of my new best friend now, Leslie Odom Jr. He received Best Leading Actor in a Musical, so call me and we can celebrate. You deserve it. Also, the Gas album may end up in the top 10 on the Billboard 200 next week. Well, it's been on a roll since its debut in October of 2015. It was the highest cast album debut since Camelot in 1961. And it has been number one on cast albums every week since it debut, except for one, and that's when the Hunchback of Notre Dame stole it. Now, Tatchers, only four cast albums have been in the top 11 of the Billboard 200 in the last 50 years. Hamilton and Dreamgirls both reached number 11, but now Hamilton is chasing the Book of Mormon, which reached number 3 back in 2011. But Tetris, I don't think that they are ever going to catch up with Hair, which was at number 1 for 13 weeks back in 1969. Now let's talk about what's happening on the charts this week. Number 1 again is Drake. Yeah, with views. He's on the top of the Billboard 200 for the sixth week in a row. The last male artist to do this was 50 Cent with The Massacre in 2005. Yes, well, Drake is also on top of the Artist 100 for the 12th week. Now, this chart began back in 2014, and with the 12 weeks, he breaks a male record. But if he wants to be number one overall, he has to beat the queen, Taylor Swift, who is number one for 31 weeks. That's what people say. Another interesting fact this week is that Paul Simon actually had the best-selling album. He hit the Billboard 200 at number three. It's his 13th solo album, Stranger to Stranger, and his highest charting album since Graceland in 1987. Pretty impressive. Now let's switch and talk a little bit of country right now. Mara Morris's debut album, Hero, kicked off at number one on the Top Country Albums chart. Now the last female artist to do this with her debut album is Jennifer Nettles, who did it with That Girl in 2014. And before that was Cassidy Pope in October of 2013 with her debut album, Frame by Frame. Let's talk about singles. Justin Timberlake, Can't Stop the Feeling is the best-selling song for the fifth week in a row. He's number one on the digital songs chart. He actually is tying his personal best. Sexy Back was number one for five weeks in 2006. Get your sexy on. Album charts, singles charts. What I want to talk about is prison songs. Is that a new chart I wasn't made aware of? Oh yeah, we had a specialist on the show earlier. You'll never look at Nick Jonas' song the same. That's true. We had Jackie Cruz stop by earlier today and she told us all about the new season of Orange is the New Black, which premieres on Friday. And she had a unique take on some of our favorite songs on the charts. Check this out. Guys, we are here with the fabulous Jackie Cruz from Orange is the New Black, which premieres on Friday. I yes. cannot wait. We are so wait. excited. I'm going to be up all night. I know, all weekend. <laughs> it's so crazy. You haven't seen it yet, right? No, we just get the scripts. We read them. But I'm also a fan, so is I kind of go like a... <laughs> so what are we gonna expect from Flaca this season? Um, I can't tell you a darn know, thing, I but know. I'm in it. I can say that. But speaking of new girls, the end of the last season, mm -hmm. there was a whole busload that showed up. So tell me, there's got to be some drama going on there. 
Okay. <laughs> She's got to take a deep breath yeah. about it. Yes, like I only get one meatball now. Before I used to have <laughs> two meatballs, and they're like, no, just one. I'm like, right. are you sure? Like, I'm serious regular. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is you also do music as well. So tell right. me a little bit about that. What kind of stuff do you do? I write my own music. Um, it's like acoustic rock, like soul. I don't know. It's... And it's even folky. I don't. Okay. I nice. have a show coming up on Friday. Friday. You guys need to come Excited. check it out. Gotta come. Yes, it's at Ainsworth. It's for the Women's Prison Association. So we watch an episode and then I sing for them and then we raise like thirty grand last year. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's for for the women who come out of prison. We help them get new clothes, new jobs, help them get into the world again. Now, with you <laughs> balancing so much with Orange Is the New Black and your music and everything, do you ever find yourself, you know, blurring the lines between prison and real life? right now because I'm always talking about Orange is the New Black. Every song I hear on the radio sounds like prison. It's always about prison. Jackie, I can't really think of any. There's, no, not. Have you guys heard of Chains by Nick Jonas? Yeah. Chains. You got me in chains for your love. Or Fifth Harmony, Work From Home. That one's obviously about someone on house arrest. I took a pill in Ibiza. I mean, come on, that is a jail sentence waiting to happen. Justin Bieber, sorry. That's one for the parole board. Also, Selena Gomez, kill him with kindness. Oh. Yeah, that one never hurts if you're asking for, you know, early release. Some good advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, Two Phones by Kevin Gates. This one is actually good for how to stay out of prison. Those burner phones are critical. True. Now, if you had to go to prison right now, what would be the song that you would feel like represents you? Dangerous Woman, Ariana Grande. Jackie, thank you so much for stopping by Chart Center. I hope <laughs> we you. never meet you in prison. Now, Tetris Billboard just released its third annual list of power players in dance music, and that is what we were talking about in our genre spotlight presented by StubHub. StubHub, your ticket out. Diplo was named Dance Artist of the Year. Where Are You Now from Skrillex and Diplo's Jack Yu, featuring Justin Bieber, was number eight on the Hot 100 and won a Best Dance Recording Grammy. Yeah, it did. Where Are You Now streamed more than 358 million times and sold more than 1.7 million copies. Now, his band Major Lazer teamed up with DJ Snake for Lean On, which featured at number four on the Hot 100 is the most streamed track ever on Spotify with 795 million plays worldwide. Well, he talked to us about his major laser tour and his plans in America next year. Let's see what he had to say. You know, we've been everywhere. We're doing some shows in the Middle East this October, like Dubai, Turkey, Jordan, Israel, all through Europe this summertime. We never really had a proper tour in America, but I think maybe it's time to do something like that. If you want to come see us, you know, last year we had the block parties. This year I'm doing the block parties as solo as Diplo, but we're just playing like Lollapalooza and a few festival plays. I think next year when we put the new album out, we're going to have to do a big tour. Meanwhile, Flume has the best sales week of an electronic dance album so far this year with Skin. Yeah, and he made his debut on the Hot 100 with his single Never Be Like You featuring Kai, which is at number 46. Yeah, gonna be a busy year for this guy. He's touring and actually has a 38-day North American leg that kicks off August 4th. Yeah, that's right. And we actually talked to him all about the tour's unique visual style. Check this out. For the first time in the history of Flume, I've actually felt really excited to bring the live show out. I wanted to create a more immersive experience. We've done all these new visuals with this artist Jonathan Zawada. The whole show has this particular aesthetic about it. We've got this crazy like flown structure. It kind of is above me. It's like these cubes with mirrors in them and stuff. It's looking really awesome. There's tons of new music. Well, you thought we would only have one guest this week? Well, wrong. We got DJ Pauly D. He has his new single, Did You Know, with T. Il Dude that dropped last week. Yes, and he is also starring on a brand new reality series, Famously Single, which features eight celebs in relationship rehab. It debuts this week on E! and it airs Tuesdays at 10, 9 central. Have you been in love? I don't think so, because I would know, right? I think you'd know. What's up? It's your boy, DJ Polly D, and I want you guys to be prepared if you ever have your own reality show. So here are my top five tips. So my first tip is to keep those jewels polished. You want those diamonds to shine on television. You see it? That's what I'm talking about. You have to keep your playlist loaded. That means you have to have all the go-to tracks on your playlist. You gotta have some Drake, you gotta have some Diplo, some Skrillex, some Justin Bieber, cause I'm a believer. And don't forget my song, Did You Know? Did you know that when you meet me, you would be impressed? Be imp you could play it as the first song, play some Drake, then play my song, play some more Drake, and then play my song again. Now here's an inside tip. Get yourself a burner phone. That's another phone, just in case production takes your initial phone, because you don't want to be caught without a phone. And the worst thing you could ever do 
is be caught on camera being pasty white. Don't ever, ever get caught on camera without a tan. So now my number one all time things that's a must do if you're ever on a reality show is keep that smile on point. Just check this out. It's working, isn't it? <laughs> you guys feel me, right? Look at that. All right. How long do I have to hold this thing here? <laughs> the Temper Trap's first two albums hit the Billboard 200, and they just released their third album, Thick as Thieves, last week. Yeah, our correspondent Cher Carson caught up with them in the Billboard studios to talk about the album and the tour. Plus, they gave us a beautiful acoustic performance of their single, Fall Together, for us. Oh yeah, you're not gonna wanna miss it, so Cher, get on with it. Thanks so much, Christine and Tetris. I'm here with The Temper Trap. How are you guys doing today? Doing excellent, thanks. You have a new album out, Thick as Thieves. You're on tour right now, and you're gonna go on this whole European tour and then come back to North America. What are you most excited for for the tour? We've got a bunch of uh, cool festivals later in England, Reading and Leeds, which is one of the big ones, and another great one called Secret Garden Party. And then, yeah, I think the American tour in September and October is gonna be one of the highlights of the year. We always love coming to tour here. What's your favorite American city to tour? Well, we're here now, so let's just say uh, New York. Yeah. <laughs> Very diplomatic. So you guys are going to perform Fall Together for us. Tell us a little bit about the song. We collaborated with this guy named Justin Parker, who um, has worked with um, Rihanna and Sia and um, Lana Del Rey. And it's our first sort of venture collaborating with outside writers. We're about to play an acoustic version of it. And now the acoustic version of Fall Together. Please. 